Hello my friends and welcome. It seems like Russia has huge losses in their K-52 attack helicopters. That's their main tool to target the Ukrainian tanks, especially on the south. I monitor the front lines constantly from both of the sides, Ukrainian and Russian. So before Russians published lots of the videos of how their K-52 helicopters target the Ukrainian tanks. Or the armored vehicles, they even have the new modification of the K-52, which might launch the special Special missiles with a range up to 15 kilometers. It was a big problem for Ukrainian forces. But since Ukraine started to use the cruise missiles plus attack missiles to target the Russian positions and one of the main Russian airfield, Russia is not using K-52 as much as before, just occasionally at the very specific cases. And here we have the photo of one of the K-52 helicopters that was shrapneled with the help of attackums. I told you by that time that all of the helicopters located in the apron where attackums landed, all of them will never fly. And we have the confirmation of my words. This is the fuselage of the helicopter. We may see the signs of the shrapnel of attackums cluster munition. So it was just disassembled for the spare parts. It will just rust over there. And that's it. It is some sort of the Russian aviation graveyard in one of their military airfields. We have the photo of just a single helicopter fuselage, but there were many more helicopters which sustained dramatic damage to their construction, so I believe that Russia lost many of them. Plus, lots of those got fired just in the field. It happened in Berdansk. I have already reviewed the Atakams attack on my channel, so because of Atakams, Russia has to move their helicopters further away from the front lines. And helicopters, they do have the limited range compared to the airplanes, so Russia is not using them as much as before. Now let's go to the front lines. But before we go to those, let me tell you about the partner and also the sponsor of my channel. As usual, it is the Atlas VPN. They came out with the best Christmas deal possible that was made especially for my followers, where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium for just $149 per month, plus you'll have 12 months extra. So why do you need the Atlas VPN? Let me tell you about it more. I use the VPN all of the time, and for me personally, Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. It has a security breach device monitoring feature, so it alerts me that someone tries to reach my device then I use the public Wi-Fi. Then I see that message, I disconnect from that public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN is very fast. It guarantees you the best streaming connection, then you watch movies on Netflix. And also by changing your virtual location, you may get access to watch all of the movies, all of the series on Netflix platform. So now my friends, please check out my personal link in the video description just below or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium with a huge Christmas discount. It is the lowest price possible, just $149 per month, plus you'll have one year, 12 months extra. I honestly don't know the other VPN service for such a low price with such a big discount offer. So why are you still not using the Atlas VPN? I'm quite surprised about it. Also, the deal is time limited, so you need to hurry up to join the club. And I also want to say that Atlas VPN are awesome guys because they do support the Ukrainian army. Last year they donated 1 million euros for the Ukrainian raiders. 1 million! It is not very often that the IT company performs such a charity. It shows that they are damn serious about support of Ukraine. Alright, the southern front line, we have the good news and the bad news from the place. The good news is that Ukraine still wants to extend the bridgehead attacking the nearby territories. For example, today we have the success moving towards Kepany village, but Russia organized a massive attack on the Ukrainian controlled territory from the south. It's not a good sign and they were unfortunately successful today. They weren't able to take Robotina under control, but they took some of the fields. Let's review one more source. So we are speaking about this overall situation. I hope you can see uh, Ukraine has the success in this area. Um, so you see that we are going to Kapani. However, at the same time, our guys left the positions over here just on the south and Russia took some territories in those fields 
it's not a good sign. Russia accumulated new forces, including the paratroop divisions, which they sent there around two months or maybe even three months ago. And now they went on the counterattack, their own counterattack. Also, they tried to reach some of the ground over here, but were not successful. Ukraine repelled that attack with artillery and infantry fire. There was heavy fighting also near to Robotina on the south from the village. Ukraine lost some of the armored vehicles as well as Russia. We have the signs stating about it. So the front lines are still boiling, but what I don't like that Ukraine was pushed away from the previous liberated area, including one of the main Russian defense line. There is just one place where Ukraine penetrated both of the Russian defense lines, and that's it. Now let's go to Avdivka direction, where Russia tries to assault again towards the city. They were unsuccessful on the northern side or on the southern side, but they moved a little over here. According to this source from one of the military analytics Mayakovsk 73, and usually he has quite a precise data, Russians took more place in the industrial part of Avdivka. Also, they have the assault vector towards the town, but I believe that they will be stopped with the help of the natural obstacles as well, plus Ukrainian defense in this area. There is the river that goes over here. Unfortunately, I expect that Russia might potentially go this area under control and also move to the north, taking this forest. But still, they are unable to go to the town itself. They still don't have enough sources and motivation to do it just from the single assault vector. Mostly in Avdivka they concentrated their forces in Krasnohorivka on the northern part from the town in attempt to cut supply line for the Ukrainian army. Let's go to the south again. Russia failed with one more attack. This time failed completely. They tried to reach this part of the Krinky village, which is still under Ukrainian control, so they started their attack from this side completely failed with this one. They used just the infantry forces and, my friends, we have some terrific images published on the social media like X and Telegram. I shared those on my Telegram channel, but I am unable to show you them on this platform. My Telegram is always available in a video description just below. The Russian constant attacks on Krinky means that this area is very important for them. They want to get rid of Ukrainian bridgehead, which potentially might play a great role in further Ukrainian advancement towards the Russian positions. But it's gonna happen just the next year. Also, it shows the inability of the Russian aviation to get rid of Ukrainian positions. They use the aviation gliding bombs, but they are not that precise and our guys were able to hide underground. The map is like this for now, so Russia has the attack vector from Krinky towards this place. All of this stuff is the gray area where the fighting continues, also the fighting continues in this forest. Well, if Russia pushes too much pressure, our guys would have to leave positions and move back to Ukrainian-controlled main territory across the Dnieper River. But it's the worst-case scenario for us in Krinky. Where Russia has the progress for sure, according to the deep state military map source, is the advancement towards Novy Mihailovka. So they really focused on this village. It was yesterday and it is like this today. Yesterday, they're very close to the town streets and those blocks, but I'm not sure whether it's town or the village. I believe that if we check the figures of the population before, it is considered as the village. But judging from the streets, I think it's the modern style of the village or town as well as the nearby villages. Mayakovsk 73 gives us the same information, so Russia took this part of the territory moving closer to Novomihalovka so soon there will be the urban fight exactly in this village. Potentially Novomihalovka could be the second Marinka if we speak about the term of the war. Ukraine and Russia might fight there for many months. Marinka, by the way, is not that far away to the north, just a little. Okay, we have just received the latest update from the deep state military map about Novomihalovka. Ukrainian forces repelled the Russian attack over here on the south so it was yesterday and it is today with the latest update 
awesome. Some say that Russia might propel towards Kurahave after they take Marika under control, but till now I don't see this assault vector from the Russian side just through that highway, maybe it's early to say. In Bakhmut direction the fighting continues, but no changes in the front line for today, as well as in the Kupensk direction in the Kharkiv Oblast over here. Russia failed here in their attack towards Sankivka yesterday, so we should expect one more attack attempt from the Russian Federation in a couple of days, maybe even tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, we're gonna see it. Overall, I might say that definitely Ukraine is not assaulting right now, mostly we are going on defense, losing the territories which were gained during the summer assault or counteroffensive campaign, you may call it. It is not a good sign, but what can we do after all, because we are in lack of the resources and Russia has many more of those. Yes, the Russian army is not that organized compared to Ukraine. Ukraine still needs some of the reforms in the army, but the Russian army is complete nonsense, especially in their command, communication, logistics, but they learn on their mistakes and it's better not to underestimate our enemy, especially then they have everything for the successful missions. They are not yet able to realize this potential on the front lines. If Ukraine had the same resources, my friends, we would get rid of the Russian army, but unfortunately it's not like that. Yes, sometimes I put thumbnails telling that Russian army is crazy, indeed it is crazy. The value of the human life, of the life of the soldier, is nothing really for them. But there is also their weaponry, they don't care, they just send wave by wave to attack Ukrainian positions and that is how they are able to get the ground with, with heavy cost for their army, but Ukraine is forced to retreat at some of the points or leave the positions you might call it. But what can you do in that tremendous domination of artillery shells? and infantry forces nowadays, because Russia hired lots of the soldiers, because they pay a lot and many people are willing to fight. Also they recruit prisoners, just imagine if they will stay alive like half a year in this war, they will be free even if they have 20 years in prison or even more. It is their only chance not to spend the rest of their lives in prison and after they finish their half-year contract fighting in Ukraine, they will be heroes in Russia. At the same time, they may do the war crimes in Ukraine, the stuff that they used to do before, but now for those crimes, they will be honored in Russia. We are coming to the end of the year and I would say that this year wasn't really perfect for Ukraine, but still our army is capable to fight against one of the biggest armies in the world. I am keeping positive about Ukraine, yes I am concerned, but yet I understand that Ukraine will never surrender. Our favorite dictator after Putin, Viktor Orban, opened the cards why he didn't want to see Ukraine as the member of the European Union. He says that in that case all of the funds of the European Union would be directed to support the new member, Ukraine, and in that case Hungary will obtain less funds. So after all it's not about the high materia that he said before, it's about money. I understand that I don't have proofs that Orban obtained money from Moscow's regime, but after all history will show that I was probably right about the statement, so I think that Orban gets the funds from Moscow personally. And he purposely plays the role of the stupid idiot inside the European Union to block all of the Ukrainian European initiatives. Anthony Blinken stated the same thing that I've just told you today. The main objective of Ukraine has already been accomplished, Ukraine was able to withstand its sovereign right. But we have a great but over here, whether United States is able to support Ukraine as well as for example in 2023 at least during the next year. Hopefully they will be, otherwise Ukraine would have to lose more territories because Russia obviously has more resources. And nowadays war is the war of exhaustion, so who has more resources wins. Seeing the nowadays reality, the long-term war is not profitable for Ukraine at all, it's more profitable for Russia. 
before it was the other case when Ukraine got more support from the Allies. And for sure President Zelensky and current Ukrainian government will never sign any kind of the peace deals with Russia. So probably it could be the first conflict for some time, but at some point some of the side should have hands because it will not last like that forever. Some say about the Korean scenario, but I wouldn't agree with that because every country and every situation and every war is unique. So we'll have our own solution. The best solution for Ukraine is to liberate all of the territories. But we understand that the current Russian regime and Vladimir Putin, who would probably stay in power for six more years, will never agree on that. So in that case, the fight will continue for all of that time. That's my prediction. The only way how this war might be finished is for Russian Federation to be reformed or collapse into many different states as it happened to the Soviet Union before. The British intelligence says that the current situation on the front lines is mostly standstill because Ukraine is on the fence and Russia has no chance to massively break through the Ukrainian defense lines. It means that the front lines will continue to boil and Russia, I predict, will take some sort of the territory, but not a lot during this winter campaign and the main action for the next year is going to happen during the late spring and the summer time, as it usually happens during each war. And this winter time is crucial for each side to accumulate more resources to use them then the weather is good. Again we have the big problem with that, luckily we still have the huge support from the European countries. Alright, here on the photo you can see lots of the people standing in the queue. They are standing in the queue to the conscription military center. Many of them are going to army. I was really shocked to see all of those people in the Moscow region because I thought that Russia is mostly hiring soldiers from depressed regions because they agree to be paid for dying. <laughs> but Moscow or the Moscow region, come on, you may find the nice job over there to be paid the same money and not to lose your life. But nevertheless, there are many people are just going and the relatives together with them probably saying the last goodbye or something. And this is the classical Russia. You can see the swamp nearby. This is the street, I think with a parking spot or something totally flooded because snow melts. And what happened after all, there was the huge iceberg just falling down from the roof of the building of the particular military facility, immediately causing the health problems for some of the people in the queue. So there was the correction of the number of the volunteers who are willing to fight in the Russian army. Oh my god, this was found on the Russian positions the prey against the devil drone attacks. Indeed, it is the prey for the soldiers and here we have the strange symbol of uh, the Saint Varvara, as they say, and the drone in her hands. Looks like an old DJI phantom or something like that. But it seems like after all this spray doesn't really work according to the videos that I saw from the front lines of how the Russian infantry is suffering under the drone attacks, especially FPV drones. So I would say that the Saint Varvara is not doing her job very well as well as the Russian electronic warfare because sometimes the effectiveness of the Russian anti-drone weaponry is the same as the spray. But it's better not to underestimate our enemy again. They develop lots of the systems to be used against the drone, so after all they will handle this stuff, but this thing is just nonsense. I don't see any kind of the Christianity over here, just the drawing with some text. I wonder how they even believe in that stuff. But more cringe and goofy stuff is coming from the Yemen Houthis. They have announced the full mobilization of their military resources and the army men. And they say that they will go to fight with Israel on the Hamas side. 
Hmm, but there is just one tiny little problem with that. So here is the Gaza Strip. This is Israel. This is, for example, Egypt. And here we go with the biggest country in the region, Saudi Arabia. And here on the south, we have Yemen. Part of it is controlled by Houthis, mostly this part, the most populated area. So how the hell on earth they want to cross the Saudi Arabian desert, the desert of the country, which is in opposition to their regime, which is actually in war with Houthis. So how are they gonna do it? They're gonna go to Jordan and then to Israel, say to them, hello Israel, we're gonna go to Gaza just for a while to fight with you. Or maybe they're gonna cross the Red Sea to where? Eritrea, then Sudan, then Egypt and then go across the channel to Sinai, after that to Gaza. Asking all of those countries, please let us go and fight on the side of Hamas. Or they're gonna take lots of the boats and just sail towards where? To Sinai, to Suez or to Israel, where? Obviously, they will be stopped by all of the forces. By the way, the anti houthi coalition has already been formed and soon they're gonna start to perform their patrolling missions in the Red Sea. But they show lots of the men with the flags and okay, we're mobilized, we'll fight uh, somewhere, maybe here in the street uh, with the flags. We're very, very powerful and lots of the portraits and lots of the... It's just complete nonsense. By the way, the same stuff goes for Iran and they say that they will fight in Israel. Just look at the distance between Iran and Israel. You understand everything. Nevertheless, to make this mission somehow possible for Iran, they sent military and equipment to some of the crazy fanatics like Hamas or here in Lebanon, his by the way, Israel might start the military operation, quite a famous word nowadays, in Lebanon, because there are often the strikes on Israeli territory from those places. How the things are going in the Gaza Strip? Well, Israel has advantage, obviously, but sometimes it has losses. This picture I saw today, those are probably some of the ethnical Ukrainians, the citizens of Israel too. Based on the pace of Israel Defense Forces, I believe that in a couple of months they'll take full Gaza Strip under their control. Okay, it seems like Ukrainian officials are seriously thinking to renew the aviation connection from the main airport of Ukraine, Kiev Borispol. Well, what can I say? This idea is nothing but PR. I know the industry, it will not start its operation. Especially in Borispol airport. We might think about, for example, small Uzhgorod airport, because the runway is located a few meters away from Slovakian border. This airport in Borispol near to Kiev is located very close to the Belarus border, and it is just impossible to perform the regular flights out there because of the insurance, security, basically the safety of the passengers. So it's totally crazy crazy idea there are many more reasons probably i should film one separate video for my aviation channel about it and i will link it to this channel so check out the community tab it will appear over there or subscribe for my telegram just not to lose it my friends please don't forget to press the like to this video it costs you nothing but it really helps to propel my channel and my videos on youtube and also don't forget to check out the link for the auto CPN, which now goes with a Christmas discount, the best offer from all of the VPN services. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.